Howdy folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to be showing you how to change out the IPR in a 6 liter power stroke. Now I know there's a lot of people that don't like the 6.0. There's a lot of guys that do. Uh, there's actually kind of a cult following around the 6 liter power strokes. The thing about these engines that is special is that they do make a lot of power if they're built correctly. And by built, I mean actually built, not a bunch of eBay parts bolted on. That's a different discussion for another time. What I'm going to show you is how to get to and how to pull out, remove, and replace the IPR. The IPR in a 6 liter power stroke is the injection pressure regulator. That's what IPR stands for. And it regulates the amount of high pressure oil that is given to your injectors. On these Huey injection systems, that is how the injectors fire, is through high pressure oil. Think of it a little bit like a hydraulic system. As you can see here, I've taken the degas bottle, moved it to the side a little bit. There's some other things removed and disconnected here, but that's completely for a different repair and diagnostic purpose. This pickup has a plethora of issues with it. So the only things that you're really going to need to remove to get to the IPR is anything fastening this this loom holder here. This is just a hard plastic loom holder. It's got fasteners there, there, and there. Take those out. You can lift it up. It'll flex up. That'll make the job much easier. There's two eight millimeter bolts here and here on the degas tank. Remove those. It'll make it much easier. You can kind of push it down or cam it over to the side. I'm going to show you guys in here real quick if the uh, light doesn't get too bright there. Directly down there is the IPR. I'm going to point to it here so you got a really good idea where it's at. This guy right here, directly in front of me, right there, you see that? That is the IPR, okay? That is what you want to remove. I forget the exact size of wrench you could use on it. I just used this Carlisle Crescent wrench, flipped it, over, turned it one way a little bit, flipped it over, etc. Now, it's important to remember that if the plug is turned downward, you can loosen it up, loosen it up to where it's turned up. I'm stumbling over my speech here. And the plug is on top because the plug does come out at 90 degrees to the valve, okay? So if you loosen it, turn it up, you can unplug it, then take it out the rest of the way. Obviously, it'll have to turn around, then it comes out this way. It's a bit of a challenge because there's not a whole lot of room in there, but it can be done. It has been done. This is a fiddly, time-consuming job, but if it needs to be done, it needs to be done. There's really no replacement for doing it. Now then, what are some other things you need to look for when you pull this IPR out? The first and foremost, or perhaps the most obvious, would be check the condition of this contaminant screen here. This will keep large, well, theoretically, keep large chunks from entering into the valve or the solenoid, which in this case, it, it is technically a solenoid. Check that for any kind of abrasion. If it is pushed in, if it has any kind of very small holes or large holes, etc., no bueno. It, uh, it needs to be, the screen needs to be replaced at minimum. Now, obviously, if something has made it through the screen here, you're gonna to wanna to probably, I would, to be on the safe side, replace the entire valve. Because if something punched a hole in this, it has entered the valve. It may not be a problem right now. Um, the reality is, if you are taking this out because you think there's an issue with it, it probably is already a problem, okay? But uh, replacing the screen and putting new seals on it is not necessarily the smart way to go. If something enters this, it's probably compromised. There's a very high chance of that. If you pull this out out of sheer curiosity and you find that there's damage to the seals, there should be one, two, three seals on this. This black one here right below the green one is more of a backer type seal, okay? And then there's black, there's another black O-ring style seal here behind the threads, right at the shoulder of the threads, all right? So check your seals, make sure they're in good shape. Also check the condition of the plug itself. If the plug is broken or full of corrosion or oil or any kind of contaminants, this may not be getting good, clean power. It may be getting no power at all. Uh, if you're in there, you might as well check and make sure that the plug going to this is actually giving it power. 
which is critical. It will not cycle, it will not actuate without electricity at the operative time. So check your plug both sides, okay? Check for any obvious defects to the housing, etc. Uh, it's unlikely, but there could be something, maybe something fell on it, maybe somebody was replacing a turbo at a shop one time and bumped it or cracked it or bent it or who knows, you know, anything, anything is possible. It would behoove you while it's out to give it a good once over and check it out. This one is in fact no good, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to perform a bench test. Full disclosure, I did not come up with this test. I'm pretty sure it's been around since the conception of anything that moves and opens and closes. The idea of using air, which is what we're gonna use to test this, uh, is not a new one. So I'm not trying to take credit for this bench test theory, but uh, it does work and it gives you a good visual uh, or audible representation of what's going on with the IPR. Alrighty folks, you'll have to excuse my lunch. My wonderful wife brought me a swell bit of food here. This is a quick redneck type bench test for the six liter IPR. I'm going to show you how to take it out of the vehicle and test it for function. In other words, does it open and close as it should? What I've done here is taken a little bit of air through a uh, piece of cheap rubber hose. It's nothing spectacular. It doesn't hold a lot of pressure, but then we don't need a lot for this test. I've marked which side is the positive and which side is the negative on the plug and I've connected that to a 12 volt battery. Now then, what you're gonna to wanna to do is seal it off as best you can, apply a little bit of air, get my power ready here. Make sure obviously if you're using alligator clips like this that they're not touching because that will cause major issues, obviously. Apply a little bit of air, Now, I was applying power to the IPR as I was putting air through this tube on and off several times. When a solenoid actuates, you can typically hear it go. In this case, you can actually see the coil move inside the sheath. So you should be able to see it, you should be able to hear it, and the beauty of this using the air is that you can hear it shut off air on the solenoid end. So if you've got a janky setup like mine here, it'll still leak over on your air nozzle, but you won't have any air coming out of here because it's now shut. Once it is energized, it should shut. This one does not. This is a bad IPR. That's about all I have here, folks. I've showed you how to locate and remove the valve. We've talked about what to look for once the valve is removed to check that it is all right and how to diagnose it on the bench outside of the vehicle to determine whether it's actually working or not. Now, the IPR valve in the six liter power stroke is a pivotal, uh, crucial uh, part of the system, okay? Without regulated oil pressure, there's a good chance your pickup just flat won't start. Now, if it does fail while it's running, it may continue to run, but probably won't start thereafter. The reality is, if you have an IPR that needs to be replaced, everything I've showed you in this video will help you come to that conclusion. Another really good thing and a very important thing to do is before you go ahead and remove it just out of sheer frustration or curiosity, is get some kind of scan tool, get a buddy, go to a shop. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that the auto parts stores scanners would give you actual data, but they might. Uh, get your hands on a scanner, get plugged into the rig, and find out what the IPR is giving the vehicle for oil pressure and what the computer is saying it needs for oil pressure. If they are dramatically different, there's a very good indication that yes, you do have a bad IPR, and then you can continue on the steps that I've laid out here. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being here. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. We've got a lot of great content on here. Check out the other videos. You know, we've got shorts, we've got uh, redneck and stuff, we've got saw minnow, we've got chainsaws, we've got all kinds of stuff, folks. It's great. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any different techniques 
for diagnosing, removing, repairing, rebuilding, etc. on these six liters. I love to hear your guys' input. I love to interact with you guys. And the comment section is where all that happens. Until next time, have a great day and go change a IPR. Not to be confused with an IPA. IPAs are disgusting.